Hello, everybody. In this video lecture, we will cover monohybrid cross. So this is a PowerPoint that I will use. Let's go ahead and begin. So genetic is the study of heredity and uh, Johann Gregor Mendel set the framework for genetics long before chromosomes or gene have been identified at a time when meiosis was not even well understood. Mendel's work revealed the fundamental principle of heredity forms the basis of classical or Mendelian genetics. Most, um, okay, sorry. Not all genes are transmitted uh, from parents of offspring according to Mendelian genetics, but Mendel's experiments serve an excellent starting point for thinking about inheritance. So Mendel's um, seminal work was accomplished using the garden pea, Pisum uh, sativum, to study inheritance. This species naturally self-fertilize, meaning that pollen encounters ova within the same flower. The result is highly inbred or true breeding pea plants. So this is how um, garden pea flower look like. And in this flower, as in many others, um, male and female reproductive organs are located in the same flower. Like this is a stamen, producing pollen and inside pollen there is sperm and carpal where egg is located. So when Mendel was able to inbred this uh, flower, he would get this true breeding. And that was important because you want to have a true breeding um, to, um, to do your research in an inheritance because you want to know for sure what kind, kind of characteristic um, uh, can be expressed in a particular plant, right? So Mendel worked with a garden pea, but his work can be applied to human genetics as well. So hybrids are the offspring of two different purebred varieties. The parental plants are pea generation, their hybrid offspring are F1 generation and a cross of the F1 plants form the F2 generation. So if you look at picture over here, uh, these two plants that are P generation, they are two breeding. That means these flowers and these plants uh, were formed by self-fertilized, uh, self, uh, self um, uh, yeah, what it's called, self, yeah, fertilizes. So it kind of like uses egg and the sperm from the same flower, right, to produce offsprings. So those was violet flowers and only possible offspring were plants with violet flowers. This is also uh, true bread and this is, for example, plant with white flowers. So again, this P generation was formed by um, self-fertilizing. Self-fertilizes means that pollen from the same flower fertilize over again within the same flower. Now, when you cross true breeding pea plants, uh, you would get F1 generation. So this will be a hybrid, hybrid between two uh, parents. And now if you uh, cross F1 generation plant with F1 generation plant, then you would get F2 generation. All right, that makes sense. So this is important to understand um, Mendelian work. So Mendel um, tracked the inheritance of characters that occur in two alternative traits. So of course, there are varieties of different characteristic in these pea plants, but Mendel specifically looked only 
um, at the character that came in two uh, varieties, right? So for example, flower color, only purple or white, right? So here you have um, either one or another color. Flower position is the axle or terminal. Seed color, yellow or green. Seed shape, round or wrinkled. Pot shape, inflated, constricted. Pot color, green and yellow, and stem length, tall or dwarf. Now look, Mendel didn't know anything about modern genetics, but today, when we're looking at these characters and those traits, we use different terminology. So those characters, flower color, position, speed color, speed shape, this is, we call those genes. So gene for color, gene for position, gene for length. Now this alternation, this alternative form of the same gene are called alleles. So gene is flower color, allele is purple or white. Because just flower color doesn't give you idea how this flower look like, right? Or seed color. You don't know what seed color. So seed color would be a gene. Alternative form of a gene would be yellow allele and green allele. And also you see here how some are dominant and some are recessive. In genetic, now we abbreviated these letters. Dominant are abbreviated with capital letters and recessive with lowercase letters. Oh, this is uppercase letter, right? And um, in the genetics, they take the first letter of the dominant allele, P, and make it capital P for dominant and lowercase p for white, right? So that's, that's how alleles are abbreviated. So let me get the uh, pen, right? So let's say if I'm looking for, okay, where my pen disappeared? Oh, oh, okay, here. So I, if I'm looking at flower color, sorry for that, I would use capital P, right? Capital P for which one? For purple, right? And I, I will not use W. Instead of W, I would use uh, lowercase p for what color? For white, right? The same over here, let's see at uh, seed color. So seed color is a gene. This gene comes in two alleles, yellow and green. And because yellow is dominant, then abbreviation will be capital Y, right? So that would be for yellow. And for green, I don't use G, I use lowercase Y. So this will be for uh, green, right? That makes sense. Um, so because M Mandel, um, Mandel didn't know about genes and alleles, he called it characters, traits, but we're gonna use uh, modern terminology. So for all these characters, we're gonna use a gene for this um, alternative uh, type of this character varieties of this character, we will use allele. And dominant alleles, we will abbreviate with uh, uppercase letter and recessive allele with lowercase letter. Now, monohybrid cross is a cross between parent plants that differ in only one character. Um, so let's look over here. This represent a monohybrid cross because we have two plants and we assume that they are identical except of uh, one gene for, and this gene is for a uh, color of the flower. Flower color is a gene, right? The only one gene or one character is different and it comes in two alleles purple dominant allele and white, that is recessive allele. So Mendel performed several types of monohybrid crosses, each involving um, contrasting traits for different characteristics. Out of these crosses, all of the F1 offspring had the phenotype of one parent, 
and they have two offspring had a three to one phenotypic ratio. So when um, Mendel uh, did his monohybrid cross, right? Monohybrid again means only one gene is different. Um, so he took the purebred parents, purple and white. So if, if you cross this, um, well, this purple flower, again, was uh, formed how? Because he took a purple flower and generation of a generation of a generation, you did self-fertilization. So you uh, use the same sperm and the same egg of the same flower. So finally, it's your purebred and the same with white flower. Now, um, Mendel was doing scientific experiment. So when you cross purple and white flower, first you come up with hypothesis. So hypothesis would be all F1 generation are purple, right? So, well, you cross them, all F1 are purple, so you supported your hypothesis. Now look, if you cross this F1 purple with another F1 purple, the hypothesis really based on the common sense and your previous experiences and experiments should be every single flower should be purple again. But this is not what happened. Over and over in the F2 generation, these white flowers came back. And it was always in the same ratio, three to one. So based on this experiment, Mendel hypothesis uh, would be that um, whatever determines this color, right? It can be, uh, it is not lost in F1 generation. So whatever chemical is here, right? Let's say it's some chemical. Today we know that chemical is DNA molecule, right? It's not chemicals that give it color because why they have this color, it's all in their genes, in their DNA. So whatever this a chemical, whatever those molecules that determine this white color, they are not lost. They just not, they are hidden. They're not expressed, but they keep they in their integrity and they reappear in F2 generation. That was very, very important discovery. So today, because we know about genes and alleles, we use Pennett square. Um, a diagram that predict outcome of particular cross of breeding. So today we know that if we have true breeding, green pot, pure bread, it's homozygous. That means both alleles are the same. This is big G, big G. This is homozygous dominant. And we know that if it's true breeding, yellow pot, Alleles must be the same because when alleles are different, we call it hybrid. So this is hybrid. This is uh, purebred. Um, so um, th this is uh, homozygous recessive. And when we separate those alleles of the parents and then we fill in Pennett square, right, we know that all the offspring are going to be heterozygous. All right, dominant and recessive, and recessive allele will not be expressed. So that's why in F1 generation, we have all the offspring that um, has the same phenotype as one of the parent. And we know then this is dominant uh, allele, dominant trait. So Mendel developed four hypotheses from monohybrid cross listed here using modern terminology, including gene instead of inheritable factor. So we're gonna use gene and alleles uh, to uh, explain Mendel's hypothesis. So the first was the alternative version of genes are called alleles. Well, that means we all have genes. We all have same genes, right? But why we are so different? We have same genes, but we have different alleles. And another thing, for each gene, you have two alleles. Because one allele comes from one parent, one from another parent. So the first hypothesis, again, alternative versions of genes are called alleles. The dominant allele is often assigned a capital letter, and the recessive allele is assigned corresponding low case letter. Like over here, if yellow is dominant, 
we will use a capital Y, and if green is recessive, we will use lowercase y. Another hypothesis is that for each inherited character, organism inherits two alleles, two alleles, one from each parent. So organism is homozygous for that gene if both alleles are identical, and organism is heterozygous for that gene if the alleles are different. So um, for every gene that you have, you have two alleles for every single gene, right? So, um, and if those alleles are the same, then you are homozygous for this particular gene. Homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. If alleles are different, then you are heterozygous for that particular gene. Right, so I, I can be homozygous for uh, hair color and I can be heterozygous for my eye color, right? But for each gene, I either, I is a homozygous or heterozygous. The third hypothesis was that if two alleles of an inherited pair differ, then one determines the organism appearance and is called the dominant allele and other has no noticeable effect on the organism appearance, and it's called recessive allele. So pretty much if, this, if, if we are heterozygous, that's what Mendel told us, right? Then one allele will be always expressed, and it will determine how you look. And a second allele seems has no effect, so it will not be expressed, Then this is recessive allele. Recessive alleles, however, can be expressed only if they pairs, if recessive pairs with another recessive. Only homozygous recessive will be expressed. Again, uh, keep in mind that not every single characteristic can be explained by Mendelian inheritance, simple inheritance. We're just talking about what Mendel came up with studying his uh, pea plants. And uh, the last hypothesis from monohybrid cross was that gametes, gametes are eggs and sperms, carry only one allele for each inherited character. The two alleles for a char char character segregate or separate from each other during the production of gametes. And this statement is called the law of segregation. So if this is a cell inside a uh, ovary, or if this is a cell inside testes, and if this cell will divide, producing eggs or sperm, so cell inside ovaries and testes will have two alleles, right? So it will be, in this example, heterozygous, big T, little t. So this is, imagine that this is a cell from somebody's testes. Inside testes, we form sperms. Now, when this cell start dividing, making sperm, each sperm will carry only one allele because those alleles will be segregated, right? So let's say if this is your dad, right? And your dad has like maybe some um, uh, allele for, let's say for you being tall, right? And some allele for you being, being short. In, um, in, the, in his um, sperm, you will have only one, right? Um, well, he will have only one, right? So if this is your dad, right? And if your dad made this sperm, right? Now one, some sperms, like 50% will carry uh, dominant allele and 50% of sperm will carry recessive allele and then it's up to chance which sperm will fertilize an egg. So your dad never gives you two alleles and your mom never gives you two alleles. They give you one allele for every single gene. Uh, two alleles for a given gene in a diploid organism are expressed and interact to produce physical characteristics. The observable traits expressed by an organism are referred as its phenotype. An organism underlying genetic makeup 
consisting of both physically visible and the non-expressed alleles is called genotype. So genotype is a genetic makeup and how these genes are expressed will result in a specific phenotype, right? So if you look over here, big B, big B, or homozygous dominant, that's a genotype. Big B, little b, heterozygous, that's a genotype. Little b, little b, that is homozygous recessive, this is a genotype. And phenotype is white flower, purple flower, purple flower. So that's phenotype. Okay, so here um, uh, some problem that you know you guys can try to do in parrots. Blue feathers. Um, oh, feathers are dominant to yellow. Sorry, not in dominant. Are dominant to yellow. Cross a heterozygous blue feathered parrot with a yellow feathered parrot. So you can pause the video over here. You can do this um, problem. It's very simple monohybrid cross problem, and then check your answer. So go ahead, pause the video. Well, I hope this is what you came up with. If B is a blue feathers, it's a dominant, then lowercase b, yellow feathers, and we have our, well, go back again, heterozygous with a, uh, with a yellow. So if it's yellow, we know it, it must have two low cases, little b, little b, homozygous recessive, and this is heterozygous uh, with blue feathers. And it, because it's heterozygous, alleles are different. And then you fill in Hennett square and your genotypic ratio gonna be one heterozygous, one homozygous recessive, one big B, little b to one little b, little b, and phenotypic ratio gonna be, this is gonna be blue, blue, yellow, yellow, so it's one to one. Or 50 50 percent so remember that's that's your prediction right this is possibility it doesn't mean it's always going to be like this it's like when you toss a coin you should have uh, 50 percent heads and 50 percent tails all the time but sometimes you can toss a coin and get heads you know 10 times and a tail only one time right so that's a probability of the outcome. Uh, here's another problem. Rhinoceroses can be born without a horn, the recessive condition. Cross two heterozygous rhinoceroses. Can they produce a baby rhino without a horn? So again, pause the video, try to solve this problem. So this is what you should come up with. Uh, big age horn present, a little one, no horn, and you cross two heterozygous, and this is what you get, and genotypic ratio is one to two to one, and phenotypic ratio is um, horn present, 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 no horn, right, three to one. So yes, they can produce a baby rhino without horn. Test cross is a mating between individual of dominant phenotype but unknown genotype and homozygous recessive individual. So for example, if you have um, you know, a dog and this dog is black and black is a dominant color. So you, you can see phenotype, black, right? But you don't know genotype because genotype can be big B, big B or big B, little b, right? Both of them, homozygous dominant and heterozygous will result in a black color of the fur. Now, how to find out what is the second letter is? That, then you need to do test cross. You cross this with individuals that has a recessive phenotype. Because this is recessive, chocolate is recessive, you know for sure this dog has little b, little b, right? Now look, if this guy is big b, big b, doesn't matter, you know, all the offspring will be black because it's always, um, he always will uh, pass a dominant allele to all its offspring. So if this big B, big B, there is no way that puppies will be chocolate. But if this guy is big B, little B, then babies can be a chocolate puppies, right? Then it will be one to one chance. 
So that's uh, the cross that can be done to determine uh, individual genotype uh, when uh, this individual has dominant phenotype. Um, okay, so here it just show us the monohybrid cross when we grow the pea plants with yellow and green seeds, right? So this one only produces gametes with dominant Y. This produce only gametes with recessive Y. So F1 generation always gonna be heterozygous, right? And um, they will um, show dominant phenotype. But now when you take this guy, right, big and little, and another parent with the same genotype, um, you know, big letter and, and little letter, right? Or, um, you know, capital and low case, and when you grow them, you will get your uh, phenotypic ratio three to one and genotypic ratio one to two to one. Right, so that's a, that's a summary of monohybrid cross. Let's see. Um, I just wanna see, um, yeah, so we have a couple um, slides. So many human traits show simple inheritance pattern. So simple inheritance pattern is this monohybrid cross that we just described and are controlled by single genes on autosomes. Most human genetic disorders are recessive. Individuals who have the recessive allele but appear normal are carriers of the disorder. So over here you can see um, two parents with normal hearing but both of them are carriers for the disorders of deafness. So they here fine, they might not even know that they are carrier, right? But if two parents have kids, right? Uh, look, this one will be a segregated a capital and low case. This one capital and low case, right? So here's possible eggs and here's possible sperm. Right, remember, eggs and sperm, they carry only one allele. So now when this sperm fertilize this egg, it will be the baby with normal hearing. If this sperm fertilize this egg, this baby gonna be a carrier, hearing will be normal. Um, now if this sperm fertilize this egg, baby will be carrier again with normal hearing. But if this sperm fertilize this egg, then the baby can be born deaf. Right, so this is a um, recessive disorder uh, controlled by autosomes. Um, cystic fibrosis, also another example of the human disorder, a genetic disorder that uh, follows this simple pattern of inheritance. The most common lethal genetic disease in the United States and caused by a recessive allele carried by about one in 31 Americans. That's, that's huge. I mean, one in 31 Americans are carrier for cystic fibrosis. That's scary. Uh, some human disorders are dominant. Some human genetic disorders are dominant. A, a chondroplasia is a form of dwarfism. The homozygous dominant genotype causes death of the embryo, so people can never be born uh, homozygous dominant. So they cannot, because look, when it says genetic disorder and when it's, um, you know, like, oh, this is not a kind of, uh, yeah, it is normal and dwarf. So this means this gene has a mutation, right? So this gene is broken gene. So genes that cause achondroplasia it's a gene with a mutation. It's a not normal, it's a broken gene. So if you have two abnormal genes, then embryo will die. But if somebody has only one gene with this mutation for dwarfism and another normal gene, right, this embryo will survive. But unfortunately, because it's a dominant disorder, this person will be a dwarf. Another example of dominant disorder is Huntington disease. Uh, which leads to degeneration of the nervous system and doesn't usually begins until middle age. But those are really bad because um, if for recessive disorder, for, for example, for cystic fibrosis, uh, somebody need to have two 
genes that are uh, not normal, mutated, genes with a mutation. So what are the chances to get these two broken genes, one from each parent? Of course, it's lower than for these diseases, just one abnormal gene is enough to cause this condition. So over here, if you see if it's normal, parent uh, no achondroplasia and a dwarf with achondroplasia only, so we have one, two, three, four alleles and only one allele is um, the one that caused dwarfism. But look, the chances are actually 50-50. So you have only one, right? That means uh, you will have, well, somebody will have this disorder. Now, can we have big D, big D? No, because the embryo would die, right? So that's dominant disorders. And uh, this is a table that you guys don't need to uh, memorize, but you can just look over here. I'll show you recessive disorders and dominant disorders. And uh, here are the uh, albinism, cystic fibrosis, PKU, sickle cell disease, Tay-Sachs disease, right? So only one um, abnormal gene, one allele, abnormal allele is, uh, uh, one abnormal allele is not enough to cause any of these diseases, right? You need two. You need to get, um, somebody need to get it from two parents, right? And here's the incidence, uh, right? And um, dominant disorders, unfortunately, one abnormal allele is enough to cause this condition, right? So uh, Alzheimer, one type, Huntington disease, hypercholesterolemia, that's incidence are very high over here. Okay, so this was the last slide for uh, this video lecture. Um, we cover Mendel's experiment and monohybrid cross and briefly talk about um, some human recessive and dominant genetic disorders. Thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.